Hi friends. So um, I, my name's Trish Roberts and I just wanted to do a little instructional video. Um, I, today uh, we were speaking to our vet on our um, visit to take Anjushri, our um, chronic feline, a chronic uh, uh, renal failure baby to when we took her to the vet for her checkup and monitoring her blood pressure, etc. And um, she suggested it would be great if we did a video, an instructional video, because we've been quite successful with um, with Anjushri. Um, um, we've been giving her subcutaneous fluids, um, and subcutaneous just means under the skin. We've been giving her subcutaneous fluids since mid-2014, um, and it's now... Um, it's now November 2017. So that's, um, uh, and she was really, really very sick when we started giving her these fluids. Um, I mean, in fact, we really thought that that was the end for her. And um, it was basically give her the subcutaneous fluids under the skin. Or, you know, she would probably, you know, sort of, um, her, she'd probably end up with skyrocketing values that ended up ending her life. So, we realized that we had to do this and but we worked out that if we gave her 150 mils of Hartman's solution which can be given IV or it can be given um, subcutaneous in this case you give it under the skin subcutaneously and um, so we've been giving her 150 mils of Hartman's solution under the skin um, just behind the neck uh, since since about mid 2014 and we do it every other day um, so you know that seems to work very well for her and um, she you know we only, it only we only spend about eight minutes giving her the actual fluids and um, we leave a set up there for her in an area so we can just take her there after we've set it up and we just give her the fluids and then off she goes and she's been a very happy cat her um, her appetite has been very good. Her values have been her, came right down after we started giving her after about three weeks of giving her these um, 150 mils every uh, other day. Um, her values started improving, and you know she's been going along quite well. She's a little on the skinny side, but um, I think that's actually at this point a bit of um, hyperthyroidism which we'll probably have to address. And that's always a tricky thing, but um, that's something that you can discuss with your vet if um, she, if that happens. But anyway, she's, um, she's going along very well. And so um, I thought that I would um, try and sort of explain um, to those who find it a little daunting giving subcutaneous fluids. It's really, it's really not um, that scary. It, it's sort of after two or three times, you'll feel like um, a real, you know, you'll feel like a real pro. You know, it's sort of um, fairly simple. And I'll just show you um, the the um, the little girl that we have been. Now that's her last year. She's um, this is one of her supervised outings, and she's up in a tree. You know, she's very happy. And um, it's it's worthwhile doing, you know. It's not some sort of um, desperate measure to try and keep her alive. Of course, it is keeping her alive, giving her these subcutaneous fluids every other day. But um, it's such a simple procedure, really. Once you get used to it, and it's also, um, you know, she feels really good, and um, it's really no no trauma for her really. I mean, she doesn't love it, but she also, you know, she puts up with it because she knows she feels better after she's had these fluids. And, um, you know, we make it a little ritual and uh, it seems to work well. So, um, so anyway, I thought that I would show you the, um, I'm actually going to probably attach a little video to the end of this so that it won't, it'll see, seem a lot simpler when you see it in video form. These are just images that I'm going to show you at the present time. And um, so the first one I was going to show you was um, um, an image of, um, well, there's the Hartman solution on the left. Just ignore that bit with the black and the writing there. We That seems, that's actually a little complicated thing that we had at the time, which was pegs that hold up the bag onto the 
the camera tripod. As you can see on the right, there's a camera tripod and um, it has a an upside down coat hanger and um, we attach the Hartmann's, the 1000 mil one litre Hartmann solution bag to one of the little hooks up there and then we actually um, hook the burette. We have a burette attached to the Hartmann's bag which we put 150 mils in each time we do it every other day. Excuse me. And um, there's a giving set which is attached to that which is pushed into the burette. So it's just the Hartman's bag attached to that upside down coat, um, upside down coat hanger. And then there's the burette, which actually has a little sort of a, a hook that you can hook up because it has to be elevated and the giving set is stuck into that. And then the needle is on the end of that. And, um, so, um, so anyway, um, and I'm going to show you a little video at the end, it, it, which will make it seem a lot simpler, but I just thought I'd show you some images anyway. And um, so that's the top. Um, I'll just um, drop this down. And um, this is the top. This is the top, the coat hanger that's attached to the camera tripod. So um, that's fairly simple, isn't it? And um, and then, uh, you know, the burette is, um, is here. That's what we put the 150 mils in. It's very simple to just fill it up. It pretty much goes right up to the top. I think the burette actually um, contains 150 mils. That's, I think, the limit. And you see there's a little blue, um, there's a little blue ring at the bottom. And that usually as you fill it up, that blue ring goes up to the top and, you know, goes up so that you can see how much is there. Um, so, so that's, um, that's just the burette. And, um, that's very handy because you just basically can leave the burette in, uh, leave the burette attached to the bag and have it set up on the tripod. And all you need to do every other day is you just go along and you fill that burette up to 150, well, whatever your vet suggests. Um, this has worked very well for us though, 150 mils. So you may want to mention that to your vet. I mean, I'm not a vet, so, um, that's my disclaimer, but it seems to have worked very well for our little, um, one so and jushri so so we basically um uh when we go to do this we we fill it up to 150 mils and um and then we uh have a, a kettle it's like a just a, a plastic kettle and we have it we have about you know 400 mils in the kettle or 300 mils and we just um we just boil the kettle and then we uh, take the lid off the kettle and then we just immerse about immerse the burette which is attached to the bag we just you know take the bag off the 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 coat hanger stand and we gently immerse the burette into the uh, kettle and we probably immerse about i don't know 40 mils it goes up to 40 mils and that's enough to sort of warm the whole burette because you want it to be warm for when when it goes under the skin so it doesn't sort of shock the cat and also you know you know it doesn't sort of surprise them it, it's nice because they have a fairly high temperature cats well when i say high it's about around 38 degrees celsius i think um so you know it's nice to have it nice and warm so um we put that um we put that in there and we leave it in there for about two or three minutes and then uh, in in the kettle and then we remove um remove the burette from the kettle and just hang the bag up again and before we use it of course we shake the burette just to make sure that all the warm water is dispersed in the bag that it's not just in the low sorry in the burette so it's just not in the lower part of the burette and then um i test it um by um i actually get a, a little needle and i um there's a at the top of um, the burette, you can, you'll notice there's a, a little air filter there. And, um, you know, to, and I, I basically, there's right up the top, there's, there's the air filter and it's got a very fine membrane. And of course, you wouldn't do this if you were doing this in an IV. You would, this is subcutaneous, so it's not a big deal, but we just get one of our sterile needles and we just poke the top of that little air filter to let more air in because we want the um, fluid to go as quickly into and under her skin as possible. And that helps 
that happen. And also you'll notice that that little clip is um, unclipped there and that helps the um, the uh, water go, you know, it, it helps the air, the air helps the water go through the burette really quickly. So um, I hope I'm not sounding too complicated here. But anyway, and the rest of the time we leave that clipped when we're not actually doing the procedure. So um, that's really um, what that is. And um, so um, anyway, but I'm probably getting ahead of myself. So I'm going to read a little thing that I, I um, wrote out um, a few years ago. And uh, I'll, I'll, I might be uh, repeating myself here a bit, so please excuse me. So it says, so f first of all, the important thing is not to worry. Don't panic about this because it really isn't, I mean, I hope I'm not making it sound um, complicated because it really isn't. And, and probably if I show you the actual, a little video of it well, at the end of this, it'll probably be, you'll see how simple it is. But um, subcutaneous administration might sound a little daunting and technical, but it, it isn't at all. You'll find that it's quite a simple and quick procedure. After a couple of administrations, you'll start to feel quite confident and your feline friend will start to relax more as you relax with each administration. Excuse me. Your, your vet may wish to run through this procedure with you once or twice. And about your feline friend, whether your feline friend is sensitive or a calm individual, it's always good to make sure the room is a comfortable temperature, there are no other animals or people in the room, and um, where you perform the procedure, um, this will assist your cat to relax. You can also um, consider having treats ready at the end of the procedure and run a feel away, you know, like a pheromone dispenser in the room. And um, just, you know, take a deep breath and relax because it'll all be okay. And um, as long as, if you're, if you're stressed and anxious, you're going to pass this on to your feline friend. So if you talk in quiet tones and have the room ready and the equipment all ready and stroke him or her and be sweet and confident and, uh, and be before, during and after. So that's the important thing is that they, that you, you know, approach it in a relaxed manner, very, very calmly, and that you, um, you know, sort of give your uh, feline friend uh, a sort of a, a confidence, and 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 that you and you care about her or him, and uh, and and have the a relaxing environment. So you may need um, your a friend to assist you in this um, if your feline friend is anxious or new to the experience. It's also good for moral support if you have some uh, someone with you um, who's familiar. So, what's a good position for this um, for this procedure? Well, um, I've seen some videos online showing one person performing this procedure, um, and this. Um, I'll just make sure the just make sure that's up enough. Um, so. Um, this, this probably would, you know, the, the videos I see online probably wouldn't work for Anjushri because, um, she's a little bit, some people do it by themselves, but, um, Anjushri's a little bit, um, anxious. We adopted her when she was two years old and, um, she's, uh, um, a Siamese, uh, you know, sort of not one of the finely bred Siamese cats, but she's, um, a Siamese cat and she's a little bit anxious and, um, so, you know, um, we, so we've decided it's a good to have a two person procedure, basically. Um, so, so personally, I, what I do now, I used to kneel and have her between my thighs, but that was a bit, a bit uncomfortable for me. So I, what I do is I just sit cross legged. Um, I'm able to sit in the lotus position, but you don't have, well, you know, like semi lotus, but you don't have to do that. Of course, I just sit cross legged in front of, um, sit cross legged on a carpet. Um, and, uh, and, um, my partner sits beside, you know, sits, um, beside me in front and, um, she holds, um, she's the one that actually does the, um, insertion of the needle and into the, to the, to the back part, the tent part, you know, it's called a tent because you sort of lift up the, um, you lift up the, the fur between your, um, your thumb and your, uh, first finger and um, you make a little tent and then you sort of insert the needle 
um, but I'll 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 probably I'll show you um, a little image of that. But um, anyway, so so we basic so she's basically in front of me, and I'm holding and Yushri in sort of basically in front of me, and my right hand is on her shoulder, and my left hand I pin I take a, a bit of skin between my thumb and my forefinger and on the left side of her shoulder so that um, if she suddenly you know tries to run away um, she's not going to slip through my hands so um, so I, I do that and she's facing forward and then uh, my partner is sort of the one that does the administration she doesn't need to hold hold the um, and juicery at all I do the holding and she does the administration of the, of the needle under the skin so um, so that's uh, so that's really how how um, we we sort of position ourselves. So um, and she feels somewhat supported, and um, and then uh, you know. So I, I basically explain that I've got I've got an explanation here. So um, our procedure, as I said, our procedure only takes about eight minutes or less, depending on whether one uses a, a pediatric burette or an adult burette. Um, we use an adult burette, and I'll I'll um, show close-ups of that later. Um, hopefully, when I do this video, um, the adult burette takes less time. Um, so um, because it you know it sort of it has a a wider um, ability for the fluid to go through. So um, it's important to get the procedure right in one, particularly when you first start. Um, so as not to cause him or her, um, you know, distress. So you want to cause as little distress as possible, um, and it make it easier next time. And you, you know, your cat will be less apprehensive each time he or she is um, goes through this procedure. So if you make the first one sort of like, even though you may not feel confident, try and give that air of confidence and just be very kind. Um, I should show you. And Jushri, she's actually here at the moment. Um, oh, she probably doesn't want to be on camera, but um, here she is. Here's then Jushri. And <laughs> she doesn't look, she says, what are you doing? Okay, she's come over to say hi. Um, anyway, so um, that's Anne Jushri. She's um, trying to get my attention. Okay, so um, so anyway, um, so it's, it becomes a little easier every time you do it. Um, I mean, it, it just becomes like, um, it's like just so routine now for us. I mean, we've been doing it now for three years every other day, so it's very routine. Um, so why is, um, it says, why is a, I, I'm, I'm going to explain why a burette is handy for subcutaneous fluid administration. Um, and it's because um, when the, um, you know, you can immerse the burette in uh, warm water it's not not necessarily hot water i mean it can be between warm and hot um, and it only takes if it's in hot water like i mentioned with the kettle um, immersing the burette in the kettle and it's you know when it's attached to the actual iv fluid bottle you know bag um, just immerse you know i've explained how you immerse it 30 mils or 40 mils under and uh, and it'll it'll sort of um quickly um, warm up and uh, it only takes like about three or four minutes and then I've explained what to do that what to do then shake it up and you know disperse the warm water throughout and then test it on your back of your hand or on your wrist anyway but it's always important to check the temperature before administer administering it of course and um, I'll explain that later so and so why is it preferable to have tepid to warm water for subcutaneous fluid administration? Um, and that's because, as I mentioned, the bo cat's body temperature is slightly higher than our normal body temperature. Human body temperature is around 37. Cat's temperature is between, I think, 38 to 39 degrees Celsius. So cold or slightly cool fluid directly under the skin um, will be a bit of a shock to them. Um, particularly if it's going at a rapid pace, which we tend to just op fully open the um, regulator, you know, the little regulator that lets the um, the fluid go through. We fully open it so it just sort of runs like kind of a tap. That's why 150 mils goes fairly quickly. You know, it takes about three or four minutes or five minutes, something like that. Um, so... Um, 
uh, you know, so anyway, if the, if the fluid is at a good temperature, um, the cat will tolerate that much better. If it's not at a good temperature, they can sort of fairly quickly start to shiver and that's not very pleasant for them. Anyway, so um, we, we thought that, you know, doing the burette and heating that up, warming that burette up, is actually better than warming a whole 500 mil bag up. It, it's sort of just, it's a, just a messier thing and it takes longer. So that's why we use a burette. And I think that's, I think really think that's the best way. And, um, and after, you know, we've used, um, after uh, we go through a bag, you know, probably every, you know, four or five administrations and, um, um, you know, and, and uh, we don't always change the burette straight away. We probably use the same burette and the same giving set that's attached to the burette, probably use it for, um, you know, 10 days or um, or even two weeks. Um, and then we, you know, attach, then we throw that out and then we attach another one to the bag, um, another new burette and another new giving set. But we always change the 18-gauge needle every time we do the procedure. So anyway, um, so that's basically why we don't use, why we don't warm up a, a, a litre bag every time. It's just much easier to use a burette. So, um, you know, um, your vet will explain why uh, cats who have chronic renal failure and that where their values are really high and they're feeling unwell, why it's why it's good to do subcutaneous fluids, excuse me. Um, so um, I won't explain why, but, um, you know, it's definitely something worth considering and it's a lifesaver, of course. I don't think, I, I'm sure that Andrew Shri would not be here now. I think she would have, we, we thought that that was the end of her in mid-2014. Um, and uh, so that's, you know, we think that it's really worthwhile. So, um, and so what you need for the procedure is you just need one bag, that's one litre of um, Hartman solution, that's a thousand mil bag, and it comes in a plastic bag. And we buy our IV fluids and syringes and giving sets, including the burettes from here in Tasmania, Tasmania Med medical, Tasmanian medical supplies. And that's often if you buy it from a medical supply place, you will... Um, You'll find that it's actually uh, ch probably cheaper than buying from the vets. Um, I mean, it's definitely cheaper for us, much, much cheaper. So you might want to consider um, finding a medical supplies place and buying your supplies from there. And we actually get ours delivered as well. So um, <clears throat> you just need, <clears throat> so we tend to buy, say, you know, eight bags of um, uh, Hartman solution and a few burettes and a few giving sets. and um, and we buy a little um, uh, thing of 18-gauge needles and we buy a box of them because that's cheaper. So there's about 100 of them in a box usually. And we have a sharps container. You know, you need a sharps container so you can discard the needles, the needles that go under her skin. And um, we... Um, um, and what else do we need? Um, so anyway... Excuse me if I'm over explaining this, but I think sometimes it's good. It's, it, in some ways, it's better to over explain than under explain. But once you see the video, you see how simple it is. You know, I'm not trying to make you um, feel apprehensive because it, it really isn't. It's very simple. So, anyway, um, and always, you know, if you wash your hands before you start and you bring your friend with you or your partner to assist you and provide moral support, if possible, for your first procedure at least. So, and remain calm. I think it's good to have two people if you can do that. But you you might be able to do it with just by yourself. You know, it really depends on on uh, you know, on the cat. It really does. You know, whether they're an anxious cat or whatever. So um, so basically, you know, you just check that you have the right solution in the bag. You know, before you start um, to ensure that you have the right IV solution, and um, and then uh, check the bag that it's intact and it's not damaged and check the expiry date, you know, and make sure it's still, it's not expired and that'll be written on the bag. And then it usually, the, these bags, these plastic bags of Hartman Solution, they come, they actually have an ex external bag on them to just protect them, a, a sort of a hard plastic kind of bag that you can actually tear off. So you can tear open 
the um, plastic and you remove the actual bag, the Hartman solution. So you just, you know, remove the Hartman solution from its outer um, plastic cover and, um, and then, uh, you know, then hang it up on the, um, the camera tripod. So, um, that like, like I showed you there. Um, so, you know, and then you just remove the burette, um, from its, um, bag, you know, from its cover and you just attach these, um, attach the burette, um, to the Hartman solution bag. Um, and let me see if I can find the, uh, uh, there, that's where you actually attach the burette into the, um, you, you take, remove the little, um, there's a little blue thing that um, you just um, twist on the bottom of the Hartman solution bag and then you push that, um, the burette into that blue thing and that just sort of allows the <coughs> solution from the Hartman's bag to go into the burette. Usually you tr sort of turn off the different little spigots so that, um, you know, so you can slowly release the, the fluid into the burette and down into the giving set. And it just makes sure it just allows there's less, um, bubbles and stuff get in there. So, but, um, you probably, you can probably find videos online that show how to prep, um, a giving set, you know, to how, how to prep a giving set and, uh, check that out to show how to avoid getting bubbles along the lines and stuff. It just saves you having to kind of flick the lines and get all the air out because you don't want air in any of the lines. Um, uh, you know, you, you want to have them all sort of, um, clear of air. So, but you can find, um, videos online that explain that. So, um, and here is um, the needle. Um, it's an, uh, let me see. That's the needle there. It's an 18 gauge needle that's put on to the end of the giving set. You just put a new one on there every every time you do the procedure, and um, it's you know it, it's in a sheath, and you just remove that plastic sheath at the top, and and then you're ready to um, administer that into the the back of the um, of the cats under under their skin. So um, yeah. So um, let me see now. What else do I want to tell you? It's because um, I think it'd be a lot easier if I just show you how to do this in, in a video. So that's what I might do next. I have um, instructions here, but I think it it's a lot easier if I can just actually just show you. So I might do that and. Um, and then I think that will make it a lot clearer. So um, anyway, that's um, basically, uh, let me see, that's that's the little setup there, the burette and everything and the uh, bag and all of that. So um, um, that's basically really all I, I'll say here and then I will attach a video to this and um, hopefully that will, you'll find it sort of helpful. Um, we, after, you know, as I said, after we sit down and we have um, Anjushri in position and, um, um, you know, it sort of goes fairly quickly from there. Um, so um, what I'll, yes, I will, I'll just attach a, a video at the end here and hopefully that will make it a lot clearer and I'll hopefully do a little narration of that. But just for now, that's um, sort of a, a brief introduction and, you um, and thank you very much for watching and um and i hope that um you know you um i hope that your cat lives a long happy healthy life and of course you know you have to have vet supervision you it's best to you know take your vet uh, take your cat along to the vet and have her checked out excuse me every few months and um or whenever your vet thinks so um but um I would encourage you to do this because um, if your cat has chronic renal failure and your vet thinks it's a good idea, I um, I would encourage you to do this and and to think about the amounts of um, that we've been giving Anjushri because it seems to be working very well for her. Okay, well, um, I'll I'll uh, I'll now show you the video. So thanks very much. So here we have the bag. And um, as you can see, it's all set up. That's not where we normally do her administrations. Um, 
I'm just going to show you, you just turn on the little regulator and then you can fill up the bag, the burette, sorry. And um, I'm just filling it up there. So there's the Hartman's bag there. Um, and it's attached to the burette. There's the uh, regulator which fills up the burette. Sorry for the jerky film. It's very difficult sometimes. <laughs> so there I'm filling it up there to 150. And the blue little marker takes it up to 150. And there's the clamp that you can clamp off when you're not using the burette or you're not using the whole thing. That should usually be clamped off anyway. Oh, sorry, that should be clamped off rather um, when you're not doing any administrations and unclamped when you are because you need the fluid to be going down to this giving set. So we'll be moving on shortly to the actual procedure. Sorry, this is probably a little bit unnecessary. So this fluid regulator is always turned off when the setup's not in use. Anyway, so there's the bag and I, we're just about to heat it up. So you immerse the burette in a heated container, a heated kettle for three or four minutes. So I put the burette immersed to about the 40 mil level and then uh, after you've left it in there for three or four minutes then you remove it and you shake the burette um, and it, uh, it'll disperse the heated fluid. So I'm just showing you there that um, th to make sure there's the full amount of the 150 after you've tested the temperature through that little air filter there you tip out some from that air filter which has a hole in it that you've pricked earlier with a with the needle and you tip it out on your wrist just to see if it's a good temperature so anyway it's up to 150 and it's all warmed up and ready to go um, so you unclip the air filter, you unclip that little, oh, that this is where we're just tipping it up and down to make sure all the warm uh, fluid is dispersed throughout that 150 burette and then we hang it up onto the coat hanger which is on the camera tripod we're very technical here and uh, and so we before we start we unclip the uh, air filter clamp to allow for air to go into the burette and help for faster flow and there's Anjushri so she's ready to begin she's not a great fan of this by any means but she doesn't mind it as you can see she's pretty calm so one person picks up this tent of skin via her fur and holds it up during the procedure to allow for good flow so um, as you can see I'm sitting behind out of camera view and uh, my partner is just about to pick up is to pick up the tent of skin. Normally we do this much quicker, but we're doing this slower for the for the camera. So it's all ready to go. The burette's full and warm, and uh, it's unclamped under the burette. There's the giving, and it's all free of air. And we're ready to take the sheath off the 18 gauge needle and put it into the the tent part which my partner is going to lift up the skin of Anjushri and make a little tent and then you press the needle, the 18 gauge needle through that through her skin which is quite thick on the back of their shoulders um, so you know it doesn't it's not so it's not painful so the bevel part is down and you push that into the tent she might make a little jerk but I mean it's really it's not hitting anything else but going through the skin and then it's in that air section of the tent and that's where this fluid then you fully turn on the uh, fluid 
which and then it goes into under her skin and she'll probably have a little hump at the end of it where there's about 150 mils under her skin so it, she looks like a little bit of a camel there anyway it should probably take about five to seven minutes with good flow you know you open the flow thing completely on, on the la the bottom uh, regulator just near the needle there's a little thing that you turn on so it should flow about take five to seven minutes if it's flowing well um, you can't see that properly it's a bit um, misty there but it's flowing reasonably well it's probably been better than that in the past but it's flowing pretty well and as you see the blue line is going down further and we're you know it's going it's going quickly so it's going down you can see there's the regulator that I've turned on there it's on the floor and uh, Jushri is looking fairly calm uh, she's she'll be happy of course when it's over because it's not her favorite thing of course you notice that my hand is under her under my partner's hands holding her holding on to some skin so that if she suddenly moves she's not going to slip through my hands normally my right hand is on the right side of her shoulder but since I'm holding the camera it's a bit awkward so but I usually have both hands on her my left hand has got her skin and my right hand is holding her around the shoulders there's the regulator that you turn on um, so so we're, we're uh, my partner still holding up that tent of skin so that the fluid can go directly underneath her skin and we sing a 10 second song at the end so she knows it's coming to the end and then she sort of shoots off like a little rocket <laughs> there she goes <laughs> Uh, we just give her a heads up and we give her a little treat afterwards and then we recap the needle um, jet very carefully because we usually leave that needle on until we have to change it when we next do the next um, procedure um, which will be not the, it, it's every other day so uh, in the end we we clamp off all we reclamp everything there's about four different clamps you turn off and uh, but before we do and also we we fill up the burette for next time so we fill it up to 150 and just leave it there with all the clamps off the air clamp the the clamp underneath the burette um, the one that uh, you turn on to start the flow that's that one so all those and you clamp off the air filter at the top of the burette so we clamp off about four little clamps and which is all prepared then for our next administration before we start the next administration we make sure that we don't have any air at all in any of the tubing that goes down into the patient you just check all the lines and make sure that the the actual lines where the fluid is flowing doesn't have any air in it and if you see any air in it you can flick it with your fingers and make it go you know it goes up and uh, you just make sure all the air is gone so there we're filling up the burette and making and clamping off the air air filter clamp at the top and we just hang it up and leave it there until we return to it again so it, it is really fairly uh, simple as you can see and there's the kettle and we put just put that back and we basically just use that every time and this is just something that uh, this is the 18 gauge needle we get a box of those a hundred in a box and um, we usually don't change it until we're ready to do the next procedure but we're just showing you this anyway so you just take it out of its sterile thing of course this isn't a sterile procedure really I mean you try and make it as clean as possible but I mean you're going through the skin of a, a cat and so there's you know you can't sterilize that skin or anything so but you just make it as clean as possible by washing hands and trying not to you know to touch everything if you can so there you go there's the 18 gauge needle on the end of the um, the tubing and you can screw that in and that secures it in and stops it from coming off and then um, there's a sheath that protects the needle and so that's the that's the 18 gauge needle it looks pretty large but as they have very thick skin on the back of their necks it's a, sort of a, not an issue really for them and then when you finish with the uh, the used needle you throw it in the sharps container 
So we hope you found this video somewhat instructive and beneficial. We suggest you always speak to your vet first and receive hands-on instruction prior to performing this subcutaneous fluids infusion procedure. And in, from Anjushri and all of us, we wish you, you and your beloved feline friend a long, happy, healthy life. Much love.